Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson. We are rolling on in Oddities October. This is the case of Nyleen K. Marshall. Not letter K, K A Y. Um, she disappeared on the 25th of June, 1983, in the Elkhorn Mountains in Helena National Forest in Helena, Montana, or Helena, Montana, sorry. Um, two years after her disappearance, the National Missing and Unidentified Person Service uh, system, other missing persons nonprofits, as well as Marshall's family, received phone calls and letters from an anonymous man claiming to have abducted Miley. In the letters and phone calls, the man detailed sexual abuse but alleged that Marshall was safe and had traveled the world with him. The identity of the anonymous caller and writer is still unknown. Uh, her disappearance has received coverage on Unsolved Mysteries, um, and I guess Nancy Grace has also given it coverage. Four-year-old Nyleen attended a picnic with her family at a campground in the Helena National Forest near Helena, Montana. At approximately 4 p.m., she was playing with other children who had walked ahead of her near the beaver dams on Malkin Creek. When they turned around, Marshall was nowhere to be seen. Law enforcement extensively searched the campground and area where she was last seen. Their attempts to locate her were in vain. Um, a man wearing a jogging suit was allegedly seen in the area this day, and Marshall was seen speaking to him. Um, two years after her disappearance, on November 27, 1985, that's when the first anonymous phone call was placed from a man claiming to have abducted her. Two months later, in early 1986, a typewritten letter was sent to law enforcement in Wisconsin from an anonymous man claiming he had picked up a girl named Kay. This letter included details about Marshall's disappearance that had never been released to the public. One detective described him as being privy to things that a normal person would not have access to. Oh, guys. Um, The writer of the letter explained that he had a good investment income, in quotes. He claimed that though he knew her family missed her, he loved her and could not return her. The letter was postmarked from Madison, Wisconsin. Around the same time, an anonymous caller claiming to be the writer of the letter placed several phone calls to Child Find America, a national missing children's nonprofit in New York. Phone calls made to Child Find were traced to several phone booths, including one located near a pharmacy in Edgerton, Wisconsin. Law enforcement disclosed that the information relayed from the caller and in the letter suggested Marshall was a victim of sexual abuse. Excerpts from the letter were then shown during the case's 1990 airing on Unsolved Mysteries. Um, let me read you the excerpts of the letter. The first excerpt, I didn't want their person to try to get information from her. Huh? All I could tell them was that she was okay. I hope Child Find can get the following back to her family. I picked Kay up on the road in the Elkhorn Park area between Helena and Boulder. She was crying and frightened, and as I held her, she was shaking, and I decided that I would keep her and love her. I took her home with me. I have a nice investment income, and I can work at home, so I care for her myself all the time. I teach her at home, and she likes to go with me when I travel. Her hair is short and curly now. She has really grown. She's almost 45 inches and around 50 pounds. 
She has all four of her permanent upper and two of her lower incisors at this time. She takes a bath and brushes her teeth every day. She eats well. Her favorite meal is pizza and cherry cola, maybe? The second excerpt. She would gladly recount to you trips to San Francisco, New York, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Nashville, Chicago, Puerto Rico, and Canada. We were even in Britain for a month last year, and she loved it. Nobody questions passports, he writes in parentheses. Third excerpt. It is, or where it comes from, only that I get it from the bathroom every morning. It is actually a spoonful of my, oh! Male reproductive fluid. Uh, it doesn't affect her physically. I have never molested her in any other way, he writes in quotes. She is a sweet little girl, and it is because of how much I have grown to love her that I realize how much her family must miss her, but she has adjusted and seems happy. She trusts me and isn't afraid. We play a lot. And she laughs when we clown around. She smiles and acts coy when I tease her. She giggles when we snuggle and hugs me sometimes for no apparent reason. I love her and I have her. I just can't let her go. Sometime after the receipt of the letters and phone calls, a witness claimed to have seen a girl resembling Marshall at a restaurant in Janesville, Wisconsin. After the receipt of the letters, an unnamed individual claimed to have murdered Marshall and disposed of her body in a mine shaft near Helena. The mine shaft, which had since been sealed, was searched to no result. Incidentally, after hearing of Marshall's case in Unsolved Mysteries in 1999, a tip received from a viewer who believed Marshall may have been one of his school classmates in Bellingham, Washington, led to the recovery of Monica. Vanilla, a young girl who had gone missing in 1982 from Burbank, California, having been kidnapped by her non-custodial father. There you go. By 1994, the Marshall family had relocated from Montana to Japan. The following year, in 1995, Marshall's mother, Nancy, was murdered in Mexico. In 1997, a nurse at a New Orleans hospital reported, Hold that thought, I need to change the battery. I'm back. Okay. By 1994, okay. In 1997, a nurse at a New Orleans hospital reported a potential sighting of Marshall and her abductor. The nurse stated that a 19 year old woman calling herself Helena <coughs> came into the hospital with an unidentified man in hope of being admitted to give birth. The woman stated she thought her mother may have been named. Nyleen, and that she grew up in another country, despite having no trace of an accent. When the staff attempted to ask the duo further questions about their identities and medical history, they quickly left the hospital. In 2017 interview, uh, Jefferson County Sheriff Craig Doolittle said that law enforcement still had no substantial leads in the case. Um, there was something fishy about the uh, couple that came to the hospital in New Orleans. Um, Eileen's birthday, what would have been her 45th birthday, was two days ago, uh, as this is being filmed. Three days ago, as this is being filmed. She would have turned 45. Uh, she was 3 feet 2 inches and 29 pounds, obviously not the case now. She wore a yellow t-shirt, shorts, and no shoes or socks. Um, brown hair, blue eyes, a small mole above her left eyebrow, and dimples on both cheeks. Her upper left baby tooth was chipped at the time she vanished. She had excess hair on her lower back. She is right-handed. 
If you have any information, please call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office at 406-225-4075. Why is it every time I'm giving a phone number, traffic goes by? 406-225-4075. That case was bizarro. Um, I'll try to find that that um, edition of Unsolved Mysteries. <coughs> what I'll have to do is I will have to. Oh, excuse me. So sorry. I'm just getting over a cold and I'm still kind of tired. Um, go through the list of episodes to find the. Um, season number and episode number. Wow. Um, Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you next time for more Oddities October. Bye, guys. Mwah.